All right, check, 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 check. What's going on guys? This is Brian from Quantum Motor Works, bringing you another tutorial today. Here in front of us, we have a 2004 Honda CRF 250R. Um, services, uh, service that we're gonna go ahead and perform here today is a valve adjustment. Uh, this valve adjustment, these procedures will be good uh, for the Honda CRF 250R. From 2004 to 2009, we're going to go ahead and get into this. Um, there are some basic and specialized tools you're going to need for this job. Um, I think I have everything right here in front of us. Um, got a brand new Craftsman torque wrench. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use these tools, which you see here in front of us. And if there's anything else, uh, I'll just go ahead and make note of it as we're actually working on the bike. Two other big things we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to perform a compression test using our snap-on gauge here. We will check the engine or cylinder compression uh, before we actually tear into the bike. Also follow up with a leak down test um, because a compression test is good but if you really want to know you know what you're working with you got to do a leak down test. So All of the numbers I'm going to be talking about here are pretty much going to be straight from the service manual. And if we look here, um, it says the cylinder compression should be about 57 PSI at 800 RPM. So we're gonna go ahead and check that out first. Let's go ahead and uh, start tearing down this bike, 10 millimeter. We have a magnetic tray that kind of helps too. Go ahead, keep your stuff organized. Okay, off goes the seat. Throw them junk pile. And the next thing is going to be to uh, basically remove the side uh, panels or the side fairings, uh, side shrouds, gas tank shrouds, radiator shrouds, whatever you want to call them. Uh, that's going to use an eight millimeter. Another thing you want to do here is uh, go ahead and put your fuel on off. You're going to have to disconnect your line here. Let's go ahead and get a rag or something to catch the fuel as you pull this. Uh, line off here and disconnect it with an 8 millimeter. Okay, not much in there. Start buzzing these off. Last one up here. Move this little rubber strap. And there goes your gas tank. Go ahead and set that off to the side with all the other gas tanks and engine shit. Okay, so taking a look here. It's like to disconnect this. Disconnect the coil carefully, pull that out. All right, see what's in there. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, take our air nozzle here. <coughs> you always want to blow out this hole before you pull out the spark plug if you can. None of that shit blows, uh, falls inside of your combustion chamber. That would be good. Okay, and another thing too, when you're doing these procedures, um, valve adjustment, you gotta make sure your engine's room temperature. Uh, I've seen other service manuals from Suzuki say 93 degrees Fahrenheit is uh, the correct temperature to do the valve adjustment on their motorcycles. So I'm assuming, you know, somewhere in between room temperature to uh, 93 degrees Fahrenheit would be an acceptable if you just got done firing up your engine and riding it around and you're trying to do a valve adjustment you're gonna have incorrect readings because everything's gonna be hot and expanded and you're gonna do a you know a pretty much waste your time and, and possibly damage your engine so 
You want to make sure everything's nice and cool. Uh, our engine here is right around room temperature. The cylinder valve cover here is uh, nice and cool to the touch. So we're going to go ahead and get to it. Okay, 10 millimeter, buzz off these two bolts on the top. cover gasket with the cylinder head so these little half moon caps right here those are usually sealed in and if you break the seal they'll leak pull the valve cover off set that to the side okay now we can kind of see what's going on here now before we start doing anything else let's go ahead and pull out the spark plug it's going to be a 5 8 extension all right so a 5 8 socket use my 3 8 drive ratchet okay just kind of crack that loose then I got this nice little spark plug tool here okay Looks like it's a fairly brand new plug. No hours on is the correct one. I am R8C-9H, Iridium IR, Iridium, NGK, Iridium. Yeah, I'm assuming this is the right one. Honda usually has these weird spark plugs here. Uh, let's do a compression check. Best way to do it is to uh, match up your adapter to the spark plug threads. Looks like it's gonna be this one right here. Usually I like to take a little bit of a uh, never cease. Okay, go ahead and thread that in. Now we have the carburetor and all that stuff hooked up, so you're gonna need to hold the uh, throttle wide open. I have these uh, sandwich baggies on here so I don't damage this guy's new grips, but you're basically gonna wanna hold it wide open as we uh, kick over the bike and read our compression gauge here. Go ahead and check out. All right, so got our kickstand, or uh, so we got our kickstart all hooked up, compression gauge, sandwich baggie, wide open throttle. Let's see what happens. Wow, nothing. Zero. Okay, so that's gonna be an issue. Um, I was not able to uh, kick over the bike, um, but I was able to uh, get a bump start, get pushed so uh there is just a little bit of life i'm not sure how much uh let's go ahead and follow up with the leak down test let's take a schrader valve tool go ahead and pull out that schrader valve set that off using the same adapter go ahead and plug that into your cylinder leak down test all right nice Okay, leak down test, Harbor Freight Special. This thing's really not that accurate. It's not accurate worth the damn, but uh, this valve right here, this is pretty much what I use it for, allows me to control the uh, air from my air compressor through this leak down testing device, which sucks into the 
cylinder head here through that adapter that we just screwed in and then uh, we can go ahead and figure out uh, what's fucked up on our engine and why we only have zero PSI. Okay, so we come to the right side of the bike. Let's go ahead and take a look here. There's this plug. We need to pull out this plug so we can rotate the crankshaft and pull that off. Hopefully not too much oil falls out. Let's see if they overfilled it. Nope, looks like it's nice and good. Okay, and as you can see there, that's our uh, timing gear and um, that's uh, pretty much what rotates the crankshaft there. That sprocket would drives the, uh, that primary sprocket there drives the clutch and the transmission. It's an eight millimeter. Okay, and let's see here. We have our spark plug out. Uh, we took the Schrader valve out of our adapter, so it should release air easily. We should be able to crank the motor over. You wanna rotate this thing clockwise. That clicking noise, that's just the uh, auto decompressor valve holding the exhaust uh, rocker valves open, rocker arms open. Um, but go ahead and spin it over a couple times. Uh, and we're gonna wanna raise it on the uh, lineup marks here. There's a notch right here on the outside of the case and there will be a little dimple on the primary drive gear there. But we wanna make sure we're rotating this engine and we're doing this on the uh, compression stroke, so we can't really see the intake valves from this angle, but we can watch the exhaust. Okay, just did something, hold on, let's watch it. All right, so there's the exhaust going down. Okay, so now those just went, so now we're on the intake stroke. So let's come over here and look at our marks. Should be coming up. And there it is. Looks like that's it right there. A little click, sounds like uh, auto decompressor, decompressing, decompressor valve is uh, set up to line up the engine at top dead center. Okay. And it's kind of hard to see that one, but if you look at the cam wheel here, that mark right there, is flush with the cylinder head and that one's a little off but that's just kind of how they are but that one is flush with the cylinder head as well from this angle and we can also look at the uh, valves and make sure everything's good as far as the cam lobes so looks like okay the cam lobes are facing away so they're not applying pressure to the lifters so that would be the correct position okay so now we should be able to do a leak down test and see what's leaking and what's going on. Go ahead and hook up your uh, leak down tester. And you're also gonna need an air source. Um, I set my air compressor to 100 PSI. Okay, leaking isn't an issue from the uh, valves or the piston then it's gonna wanna force that piston down and rotate the engine over and spin this tool out of your hand. So you gotta, you know, a ratchet isn't usually the best because uh, it could spin in either direction sometimes. Uh, breaker bar is best to hold it. We'll slowly uh, pressurize it as we hold this here. All right, pressurizing it. Oh, it moved, look at that. Let's pressurize it again. Let's check our timing. See if our timing moved. Uh, looks like it moved just a cut hair. Uh, Close enough. We get an idea. I do feel some res oh there it goes Let's see go ahead and uh, 
One little trick is you can go ahead. Whoa, this fucker's going twist throttle. That's uh, cranking open the throttle right there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Listen to. Let's see if we got anything on the exhaust. We got a lot, a lot of leak down from our uh, intake valves. All right, let's go ahead and text our customer and let them know. Okay, let's go ahead and remove our adapter here. Let's go ahead and leave it the way it is because we're going to want to do a follow-up leak down test. All right, guys, for this next part, we're going to go ahead and take some valve clearance measurements. Once again, go ahead and make sure your alignment marks there are aligned. The cam lobes are facing up and away. This one's at top dead center on the compression stroke and our cam wheel markings here are flush with the cylinder head. Okay, um, straight from the book, the intakes should be at five thousandths plus or one plus or minus one thousand. So realistically, they could be anywhere from four to six thousandths, five thousandths. Side. Oh yeah, we're tight. Can't even get that in there. All right, Just go straight to a two. Oh, we'll try a three. Those gauges are kind of worn out from all the millions of bikes that I've checked. Nope. go down to a uh, two thousandths. Nope, didn't get a two thousandths in there. Okay, so that means our intake valves are a negative. They're definitely being held open. Okay, so our intake measured. It's going to be negative. And then uh, negative on that side. Okay, let's go ahead and check the exhaust. Book says 11 thousandths plus or minus 1 thousand, so it can be anywhere within the range of 10 to 12 thousandths. So let's go ahead and start with the 11. Okay, and uh, check these. You're going to go right underneath the rocker arm and the top of the, the valve. Oh, it's going. Yeah, that's why it's a little tight. And this one's a... Uh, right here is oh, it feels pretty good actually maybe a little on the loose side let's try a 10 on the right and a 12 on the left there's our 12 thousandths doesn't want to fit too tight all right let's go to this side so this one's loose let's go with the uh, Try a 13. Not 
know what it is. Alright, so this one's a 14. Come here. Let's go. 14,000. On this one, we're going to say. say 11 on that one so now we have our measurements the uh, left exhaust valves we have a gap of 14 thousandths the right's at 11th which is good so we're not going to touch this one we're gonna have to adjust this one uh, the intakes are way out of range so we're gonna have to adjust those so let's go ahead and get into the next thing. Uh, okay, so now that we have our measurements, uh, first things we're gonna wanna do is uh, crack open these bolts here. This is for cam chain tensioner assembly. Uh, let's go ahead and take off this uh, cap bolt here. Okay, and you can go ahead and crack these. Just taking off the top one first. It's a little bit easier. Um, leave the bottom one where it's at. That way you can take the top one off by a uh, finger. Go ahead and loosen it up here. Try to keep it as even as possible. Okay, got that one loose. All right, and uh, just make sure here you can see there's a little dot that's gonna face towards the left. Comes time to insulation, I'll show you how to uh, collapse the plunger here when it's time to reinstall this. So now that's out. Now what we can go ahead and do is uh, we're gonna go ahead and crack this loose, these bolts here, and then we're gonna need a uh, piece of safety wire to hold up this cam chain. All right, so now that we got the uh, <clears throat> cam chain attention, cam chain tensioner out. Go ahead and uh, focus on the camshaft caps. Don't want to use a 10 millimeter breaker bar and loosen all these up in a crisscross pattern. The service manual doesn't specify which one to start or in order. It just states to loosen them in the crisscross pattern. So after you've done that, go ahead and pull out all your bolts. All right, pull off the camshaft caps carefully. Don't drop this uh, snap ring in there. Retaining ring. Careful not to drop the retaining ring. Go ahead and grab your safety wire and have that ready. What you're gonna do is pull out this cam. Pull the cam chain, don't drop it. All right, you can set your cam off to the side here. Okay, cam chain up, cam off to the side. Okay, and now for the next part, we need to uh, adjust one of the valves here. So we need to pull out the shaft on this rocker arm assembly. We want to use a uh, six millimeter hex. Let's go ahead and pull that out. Save the o-ring with it. Now the book says to use uh, one of the bolts from the cam shaft caps. And you can thread into that. Uh, mine's loose, so we're just gonna use our magnetic hand. Use that to pull it right out. Okay. Go ahead and set that off to the side. Now we can go ahead and pull our lifters. Left and right. We're gonna be replacing this shim. Way 
All right, go ahead and take a little bit of a uh, carb cleaner and just. stuff out okay let's go ahead and start with the uh, exhaust Okay, so basically uh, I already kind of did the math here, but uh, these upper shims, these are the ones that came out, our left exhaust, our left intake, and our right intake. Um, basically if we measure this one out, the left exhaust measures out to about 25, 50, 75, 95, 96, 97, about 97 thousandths. So uh, we wrote that down, it's at 97. Um, left intake, this is the wrong one. The left intake was measured at 2550, 75, 70, 75 and 5 tenths. The right intake was measured at about 60 thousandths. So we wrote that down right there. Exhaust 97 thousandths. Left intake 75 and 5 tenths. And a right intake 60 thousandths. So the whole thing on, uh, on the exhaust here. Um, we need to be at 11 thousandths plus or minus 1,000. So if we're at 14, we need to go at least 3 thousandths um, up to put us within that range, plus or minus 1,000. So if uh, this shim right here that we chose, this one measures out to, this one measures out to about 99, about 99 almost 99 and 5 tenths so that's going to put us two over which should drop us to about 12 thousandths um, which will put us right in that range there plus or minus one yeah, 11 thousandths plus or minus one thousandths that's going to be acceptable um, as far as the intake now uh, we weren't able to get a reading so we're just going with our uh, hopefully this works out um, we're going about seven thousandths down here. Um, let's see, we're gonna try to go seven to eight, and then this one we're going eight thousandths on the right. So, let's see here. The left shim we got, what was that, 50, 65, 66, 67, we got 68 thousandths on the dot. So those are the shims that we're going to be using to uh, hopefully get our, our valve clearances within range. Grease and a little bit of engine oil. And you just basically want to mix those up. Alright, let's take the shims. film just pop into place okay we're facing up all right nice okay that's all good let's go ahead and put our lifters back on
go ahead and put our rocker arm assembly. And you want the holes here to be lined up with the holes in the camshaft cap so the bolts will go through. Go ahead and stop that right there. Okay, now time to get our cam. And to install this correctly, you want the lobes facing outwards and you want these timing marks here flush with the top of the cylinder head surface, not including the gasket. So let's go ahead and reverse procedures. Go ahead and take off your safety wire on the cam chain. Go ahead and support it. And you can push these bearings out to kind of make it easier to get the cam chain on. Let's go take a look down below and see how close we are. apply a little bit of pressure to the top of the cam to make it sit in the cradle and then uh, take my finger and apply a little bit of pressure gotta make sure your bearings are pushed back over okay. All right. see our timing marks right there that one looks good. That one looks good right there too, right where it's supposed to be. Got on the first try. Let's go ahead and make sure this didn't move down here. Oh, look pretty good still. Okay, well, that was pretty easy. Timing looks like it's good. Double check it one more time before we put this all back together. Yeah, that looks nice. It's right where the marks are supposed to be. Okay. So now we can go ahead and put our caps back on. Uh, book says put a little bit of grease on the retaining rings there. I'm guessing that's the kind of help hold them in place so go ahead so right here goes on the right Just a little bit, just enough to kind of, you know, lubricate it, hold it in place. All right, let's go ahead and drop this one in. before we install the bolts for the uh, camshaft caps. The service manual says to apply a little bit of oil to the threads. 
So let's go ahead and do that. Let's apply a little bit of oil there. All right, take these, drop them in. Okay, and you wanna install these bolts back into the original location uh, because the ones in the rear are actually a little shorter than the ones in the front. Uh, so you wanna make sure that you know, you're putting them back in the original location. You can go ahead and speed things up by using an impact. Don't cinch them down, just lightly and stop. Stop. Okay. Now it says uh, 12 foot pounds and two or three steps. So that's gonna be 144 inch pounds. Go ahead and set it. All right, double check, make sure our timing hasn't moved. No, timing looks good still. Looks nice, okay. Let's go ahead and torque these down in a crisscross pattern. Don't fully torque them just yet, just kind of cinch them. on the side make sure the o-rings on there time that okay now let's move over to our cam chain tensioner a little flathead screwdriver you want to turn this thing in counterclockwise and watch the plunger go back in now I don't have the special tool to lock it in place and most people don't so you're just gonna have to hold it by hand and set it in and then get those threads in there Okay, now uh, time to double check our work. Should be at, let's see, should be at plus or minus five thousandths. Let's 
six thousands. Six thousands. That one's good. At six. All right. Let's see. We're only able to get four on. Let's see if we can get a four. Definitely a three fits. And a four, a little tight, but that's technically within spec. Okay, so those are good. this bike this motherfuckers look at that look at hold on look at fucking cocksucker look at that. oh those fuckers are ceiling well fuck it they're good text them anyways torque all this down Don't know the torque spec, uber tight. Okay. Okay, that's good. To cap on the uh, cam chain tensioner. Make sure the ceiling washer's there. Put the 
this cap on. Oh, look at that timing has it even moved. Alright, lowering on. see what happens in the street. 